Hare Krishna. Welcome to the narration of the Mahabharat war in the series on those 18 days. Today we come to the 11th day, the day after the first major disaster happened in the are in the battlefield that was the fall of Bhishma. The next day Karna who had been waiting out as long as Bhishma had been the leader emerged eager to fight eager to repay the debt that he felt toward Duryodhana eager to exhibit his skills and fight against Arjuna the fight that he had been waiting for throughout his life. Duryodhan approached Karna and told him, Oh Radheya, please become my commander and lead me to victory. Karna, however, remained thoughtful. He said, O oh, king, O oh, Duryodhana, Drona is still fighting. Putting aside his affection for the Pandavas, he has fought heroically for you. He is the preceptor not only for you and your brothers but also for many of the warriors who are fighting for you. If he is neglected and I am made the commander, he will feel offended and many of his students will feel offended and they, if, even if they don't rise against you, they will not fight wholeheartedly for you. Make Drona your commander. Duryodhana thought about Karana's suggestion. He also knew that feeling, but he felt that he was confident about Karana's animosity toward the Pandavas. He was not that confident about Drona's. But after having got the red signal from Karana, he went to Drona and he offered Drona the commandership. He says, Just as Indra leads the gods, please lead my army. With you at our head, we will surely attain victory. Drona stood tall on his chariot. He said, I am well versed in the Vedas and their auxiliaries. I am well versed in the, in the weaponry. I will lead your army and I will fight against Pandu's sons. I will destroy the Panchalas and their, fall, their associates. And I'll wreak terror in the in the power in the Pandava camp. However, O Prince, I do not think I'll be able to defeat Drishtadyumna because he has been born with the destiny to kill me. Duryodhan nonchalantly shrugged off that concern, he told Drona that we will keep Drishtadyumna away from you. And he didn't worry because already Drona and Drishtadyumna had encountered each other several times and each time Drona had been far better. It was inconceivable that Drishtadyumna would actually be able to kill Drona. Then they summoned the sacrificial water and poured it on Drona's head to announce him as the commander. After the sanctification was done, in the presence not only of Duryodhana but of the leading warriors of the Kaurava forces, Drona raised his hand in benediction and he said to Duryodhana, I am pleased with the honor that you have off offered me. Drona too had been apprehensive that he might have to fight under Karana. For Drona knew that Bhishma was senior in age, senior in experience. And finding under Bhishma was not a problem. So while he had been expecting that he might have to fight under Karana, when he had suddenly been awarded the commandership, he was pleased. He says, I would like to give you a boon. What would you what do you want? He says, Please arrest Yudhishthir and bring him to me alive. Duryodhana had been just waiting for this. And he asked what was in his mind. Drona's eyes opened wide. He said, O oh, Duryodhana, it seems Yudhishthir is such an Ajata Shatru, such a 
non-inimical person that even you do not desire his death will his death not end this war why is it that you want him alive do you want now to seek peace and avoid this terrible war so that all these warriors can go home alive and this bloodshed can be avoided Duryodhan had a smile on his face but he shook his head he said over the last few days I have realized that even an army of the celestials of the gods cannot defeat Arjuna and Bhima Therefore, I have an alternative plan. If I cannot defeat them on the war field, then I will defeat them the way I did earlier, on the gambling board. After you arrest Yudhishthir, I will challenge him to another gambling match. And there, we will have him defeated and again sent to exile. And then I will consolidate my forces. Even if I ask you to kill Yudhishthir and you succeed, then Arjuna would be so enraged that he alone would, will destroy all of us. Hence, my strategy is to def outwit and defeat them on the gambling board. Drona gazed at Duryodhana's smiling face. This foolish prince had learned no lesson. Even after the fall of Bhishma, whom nobody in the universe had ever been able to defeat, this prince had learned no lesson. Bhishma had himself time and time again told Duryodhana before the war, during the war and after his own fall that the Pandavas led as they were by Krishna were undefeatable. But Duryodhana was not ready to listen. So then Drona said grimly, thinking within himself that he had a duty to perform. Although Drona, Drona knew that Duryodhana was foolish, but still he was the commander of that prince's army. He said, I will do my best to arrest Yudhishthir, but you must keep Arjuna aside. If Arjuna intervenes, then it will be impossible. Indeed, Arjuna cannot be defeated by anyone in the universe. Although he is my student, he is far younger than me. And he has also performed austerities by which he has got an array of formidable weapons known only to the gods. If he comes in the way, even I will not be able to stop him. Duryodhana smiled and he said loudly so that all the commanders could hear, all the warriors assembled could hear. He still suspected that maybe Drona might not fight wholeheartedly because of his affection for the Pandavas. So he wanted to hold Drona to his promise and he said, Oh warriors, fight wholeheartedly for our new commander, the great Acharya Drona has promised that he will arrest Yudhishthir. When he is determined, who can stop him? Let us all assist him and keep Arjuna away from him and he will bring victory for us. All the warriors cheered. Soon the news reached the side of the Pandavas. When Yudhishthir heard it, he immediately called Arjuna and he said, Oh Arjuna, you should not leave by my side. Otherwise, Duryodhana's evil plan will succeed. Arjuna said, gravely but confidently, he said, Oh brother, have no apprehension. The sun may stop shining, the stars may fall from the sky, the oceans may dry up, but the Kauravas will never succeed in their evil design to arrest you. I will be there to stop them. Then soon the war began in dead earnest and like Bhishma in the previous days Drona tore through the Kaurava, to, to lead to the Pandava forces and he seemed like Yamiraj the god of death 
with his destruction causing stuff the pandava forces just couldn't stop him couldn't face him at all he, although they fought gallantly they were, they were just too slaughtered by drona's attack those warriors who came to confront him were soon destroyed and drishtadyumna tried to challenge drona along with abhimanyu and the upandavas the sons of the pandavas drona scornfully neglected them and continued attacking they attacked severely and drona attacked them and other warriors intervened from the kaurava side and drona was free again to wreak havoc on the pandava ranks <clears throat> apanchala's prince kumar came forward to challenge drona now drona and drupada had a long rivalry and it went back to the early days for various reasons and drona had resolved that he would destroy the panchala forces so kumar fought heroically everybody was surprised to see him holding his own against the great preceptor he shot several arrows which pierced through drona's defenses and wounded him drona blazed forth in anger and taking sel powerful darts he aimed them at kumara's vital organs and although kumar fought back heroically drona's arrows were unstoppable uncounterable unbearable and soon kumar fell dead other panchala princes vyagradatta and others and simhasena joined in the battle to hold drona back they both fought heroically but both of them were in no time sent to the same destination as kumar by drona seeing drona's prowess terror was struck in the pandava forces who could withstand him who could fight against the preceptor when he was in this mood and he was he came very close to yudhishthir and the kaurava warriors started cheering yudhishthir is captured and the pandavas who were fighting pandava warriors who were fighting to stop the stop drona from reaching yudhishthir were mowed down by drona yudhishthir himself fought but he was no match in archery to his preceptor yudhishthir's arrow was broken his armor was broken his chariot was his chariot here was wounded his chariot was destroyed within a few moments drona would fulfill his promise and yudhishthir would be arrested completely altering the course of the war the pandavas cries of alarm reached arjuna's ears arjuna had been fighting in another area of the battlefield the kauravas had tried to keep him engaged over there but as soon as arjuna heard about yudhishthir's plight he charged through the kaurava forces toward toward the battle between yudhishthir and drona duryodhana sent countless forces to stop arjuna but arjuna used all his prowess and destroyed whoever stood in between nobody could stop arjuna as he charged to protect his brother and his king and as drona was about to swoop in for the final kill to not here kill in the sense of destroying but kill in the sense of metaphorically finishing the mission capturing yudhishthir arjuna's chariot charged in between with thunderous speed and noise and power and drona was thwarted drona used his full ability full force to attack arjuna but arjuna's loving concern for yudhishthir and anger at those who were endangering him was such that neither drona nor any of the forces assisting him could stop as arjuna countered all of drona's attacks and pushed drona back arjuna also destroyed all the soldiers who were assisting drona 
and she, seeing the force and ferocity of Arjuna's attack, the Kaurava, soul, the Kaurava attack was thwarted. The Kaurava advance toward Yudhishthir soon became a retreat. And it seemed as if it would become a rout. Despite having their commander at their helm, the Kaurava army was not able to withstand Arjuna's attack. Seeing his army getting, uh, getting routed, and seeing that the sun was nearing the horizon, Drona blew his conch to indicate the end of that day's hostilities. Drona returned back, dejected. He had wanted to keep his vow. He was, after all, an honorable person, an honorable Brahmana. And he had given his word. He told Duryodhana, O, King, o Prince, I had told you that if Arjuna comes in between, I will not be able to arrest Yudhishthir. Drona said, O oh, warriors, he told his other warriors, so this is our plight. So, so Susharma, the king of the Trigartas, came forward and he said that Arjuna has humiliated us many times in the past. We will, I along with my brothers and my relatives and my entire army will challenge Arjuna tomorrow and draw him away. We will keep engaging with him till our deaths and Drona will have the course clear to arrest Yudhishthir. On hearing this declaration by Susharma, Duryodhana smiled. Yes, it is unlikely that Susharma would be able to stop Arjuna or would even survive Arjuna's attack. But if he could hold Arjuna up long enough for Drona to arrest Yudhishthir, his battle would be won. The next day, they tried the same thing. But again, Arjuna not only countered Susharma, but also came back to save Yudhishthir. Krishna was there by Arjuna's side and Krishna alerted Arjuna to the danger when it became uh, imminent that Yudhishthir would be captured. And Arjuna thundered back again to the rescue. And again, the Dronacharya was dejected. So that evening, this, this happened in the 12th evening, but the principle remains the same. What had happened on the 11th also happened in the 12th. Duryodhana ranted at Drona, you had promised me that you will arrest Yudhishthir. Why have you not done so? Drona said, oh prince, can you not see the wounds that I am bearing for your sake? I have tried my best. We humans can only endeavor, but the result is determined not by our endeavor alone, it is determined by destiny. And the Lord of Destiny stands on the chariot of Arjuna. How then can we win? This is the lesson which Duryodhana never learned. No. We all, when we study histories like the Mahabharata, or even our normal histories. We are meant to learn from history, learn from the people of the past, the things that should be done and things that should not be done. Now, things not just in terms of the technological developments that we have, which we have built over the past generations, but the moral choices that we make, the ethical decisions that we make. If we don't learn from history, then what happens? We become lessons for history. Duryodhana's every single plan to arrest the Panda, uh, to thwart the Pandavas had itself been thwarted. Not only had the Pandavas not been defeated or destroyed, through, through each adversity, each atrocity that Duryodhana caused on the Pandavas, inflicted on them, through it the Pandavas suffered for some time, but then they emerged stronger. When Bhima was burnt, was attempted to be poisoned, Bhima went to the Varuna, the water god, and got celestial nectar by which he emerged stronger. When the Pandavas had to flee into the forest when the Varanavat fire was burnt, uh, Varanavat palace was burnt, they have suffered austerities in the forest, but then they emerged with an alliance with Drupada. They had married Draupadi. The Pandavas suffered terribly in the exile, but therein, Arjuna gained celestial weapons, ascended to the heavens, and they emerged stronger. Here also, time and time again, 
all of Duryodhana's plans had been thwarted. But unfortunately, he never learned. So if we are too attached to what we want, we are just not able to see the reality of things around us. And Duryodhana is a lesson on, in obstinacy, in self-destructive adamance, sticking to one's own ideas without considering the costs and thus paying a far un, unbearable, unconscionable cost. That all the warriors who who have died till now and who will die in the Kurukshetra war all died because of Duryodhana's attachment. His irrational envy of the Pandavas and his, and his own greed. So those who don't learn the lessons of history themselves become lessons for history. Duryodhana did not learn the consequences of his adamance and thus he himself becomes a lesson for us, all of us about how stupid obstinacy is and how destructive its consequences are. Thank you. Hare Krishna.